Alrighty, we're on. G'day, g'day, and welcome back to another episode of A Lot to Talk About. It's your boy, the captain of the ship, the man in charge. It is I, Bradley J. Driver. As always, you can call me Brad. Stoked to be here. This could be, I reckon it's probably going to be the biggest. Um, this will probably be episode around 90, maybe late 80s, by the time you guys are seeing this and hearing this. And I've actually been working on this one for a while, so my guest today wouldn't remember, but going back in my archives, I think it was week maybe one or two of the pod, mm. I thought... This is a guy that I've got to have on at some stage. I knew I was green, I was early, but I just reached out and I've sort of just kept reaching out and putting the feelers out since and we're finally here in the new studio and he doesn't need an introduction, but fuck, he deserves one, so I'm going to roll one from the top. Freestyle how it always is. So today's guest is a former NRL winger. He played for the Broncos and the Warriors. He's now the founder of Bloke in a Bar, Bloke Beer, The Locker Room, He's done so much in rugby league media and he's doing so much in business. So from your home in your car or wherever the fuck you are, give a very warm welcome to the one, the only, Denon, a.k.a. The Beak, Cam. How are you, brother? Mate, I'm happy to be here. I think it's, um, you know, around the 90 mark, I think you're definitely warmed up. You've, you've definitely warmed up. Mm. I think you're ready, bros. I think you're, to be honest, you would have been ready at one or two. Yeah. You're always I'd, ready. I'd like to think so. Because there's there's, sometimes there's a... Uh, a, a, an innocence in an interview is sometimes endearing to, to watch. Like, for example, when I first had Bo Ryan on the first episode, yes, it's cringe for me to watch, but it's also cool for other people to see, like, the, the length, like, yeah. how much you've changed since the start. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, happy to be here, bro. I'm really excited to have you. So we're here today in the new palace. Uh, Bloke Studios, yep. Bloke Studios. This is really cool, and it's, I was saying to you just before off camera, like, for me, this is a future dream, and... Whilst we've had very different lives, I'm no NRL player. <laughs> um, I did carve it up in under sixes and sevens. You know, scored a couple of Chico's burgers, free yeah. Chico's burgers. I was a bit of a gun when I was six. But, <laughs> um, we've had very different you lives. You know what small gun, bro? It's the fact you can remember when you were six. Bro. That's, your, that's your talent. That's your try. Elephant memory, bro. Mate, I'm telling you. That's, the actual, like, that's worth more than the NRL ability. If you've got <laughs> the memory that you can remember when you're six, you're the fucking next... You're the next, uh, you're the next um, Elon Musk, bro. <laughs> I don't know about that. Mum, mum and dad will be watching that fucking fuck, surely not. Um, but like I said, it's, it's awesome to be here and our differences in careers. Mm. But in a way, there's a certain similarity where you left the NRL, you found yourself in a trade and you've left that trade to pursue this dream and, mm. you know, look where we are now. And that's what I love about you and your story. And there'll be so many, you know, lads and ladies watching this today that, love your content and i know because the minute i put up that you were coming on i just had dms of doom man so many guys <laughs> oh, really? getting around this oh, saying we crazy. can't wait that's crazy which man. is sick um but you know we're not here today typically to talk a lot of footy like you do on a lot of your shows mm. i'm here to hear the come up story you know like how this all began where it come from because as each and every one of you tuning in know the pod now and the direction of a lot to talk about is uncovering the stories and all of the rawness and realness that comes with you know, that journey of doing what you love, finding your purpose, fucking pursuing it when times are tough because times are not always easy. And I can guarantee you're going to have some stories around that and becoming who you want to be and always being in pursuit of that next thing and the best version of yourself. So I guess, you know, we'll touch on quickly an amazing footy career. What age did you finish up playing? Uh, I think I was about 26 or seven when I finished playing. Yeah. And you've uh, obviously got a passion for the game, right? Yeah, well, obviously, like I, it grew, I grew into a passion initially. When I was growing up, obviously, I didn't, I didn't even watch rugby league. I was a soccer player, um, but you know, as I began to play and see the intricacies in the game and just parts of the game that you don't necessarily appreciate from a casual distance, um, yeah, I definitely grew to love the game. Absolutely. And so, was that a really hard decision to walk away? Not really at the time. Uh, definitely was struggling. wasn't happy. I'd already played enough NRL to say I was an NRL player. So it was more just along the lines of, look, I, I feel like I've got so much more to offer after rugby league. There's no point in me hanging around and playing an extra, you know, 40, 50 NRL games. Like, what, what's the difference? So yeah. I just said, stop it, Dunskies. So walking away from footy, um, would I be wrong in saying you walk straight into the trade? Like, Essentially. Like, was that the next move? Yeah, basically. Yeah. So, like, I'd quit footy. I mean, there was a period there where I wasn't doing anything. Um, 
And then, like I said, you know, I was just like pouring beers and that. Yeah. And then I got an opportunity to down in Wollongong to play for the Butchers, the Rule. Yeah. Um, Nathan Friend, uh, Nathan Fien, sorry. And um, Fanny's Fanny's a, a corporate boy these days. Yeah, he's corporate now. Where our studio is, he has coffee yeah. there every now and then. Yeah, yeah, he's corporate now. But he he got me down there to play. The only pop, so he he said you can come down and play, but we've got a uh, a mature age electric, electrical apprenticeship for you at ARA. They used to be yeah. called Bass, and Essentially, the week I got down there, they were like, oh, you've got to go work away in Maroolan or like near Goulburn. And I was like, fuck. And I just said, if I played like one or two games. I said to Finchie, I was like, ah, oh, sorry to Feeney. I was like, mate, I'd, I'm not driving two and a half hours to train and like, I'm just, yeah. I'm not in that part of my life. Like, I don't enjoy it that much to come back to play footy. Even like, because we had to um, work away and it was an above ground mine. And I was like, mate, I'm not living in Maroolan for a fucking Sunday through to Friday and then coming back and then spending my Saturday playing footy. Like, I just can't do it, bro. He was really understanding. He was all, you know, totally fine. The company was really understanding. They were like, look, you're a part, you're an employee now, so we're totally okay if you don't play footy. And, yeah, then I just started doing the electrical apprenticeship. And how long were you doing that for? And, and can I ask, before you answer that question, at the front of your mind or at the back of your mind, is any of this there? No, nah, not, not at all. I mean, it was there... 2011 is when I wanted to make a YouTube channel. Um, and so th- that was initially there, but I was playing rugby league at the time. And there was a lot going on in my personal life, so I never really committed to it. But 2011 was when I first... I, I did create a YouTube channel and I did edit some videos together um, that will never see the light of day because they're shocking. <laughs> um, but I just never fully committed to it. And it's all the fear of failure, all that kind of stuff. And when you're playing rugby league, th- in 2011, if you went to your squad and said, I'm doing YouTube you would just get annihilated. Like, it's not like it is today where it's okay to, like, post pictures of yourself and all that. When I was coming through, like, if you ever took a selfie, you would get crushed, like, absolutely crushed. Totally different time. Totally different time. Much more conformist back then, which is fine because there are a lot of benefits that come with that. You know, sometimes you, you create a very good team culture when you don't have people, you know, doing their own thing. The negative, obviously, is you don't get to express yourself. Um, and so I just put that aside for a while and it, so it was always a passion and always like a a deep-seated passion but it was something that kind of just drifted away because it didn't seem like a reality and also there was no money in it all that kind of stuff and i needed i needed a job i needed money so i'd quit and I, I quit footy with no money um and yeah so i started the apprenticeship and i was doing that for about nearly two and a half years i'd say nearly three years i think but yeah doing for quite a while yeah and then obviously this sort of stuff started to happen now we spoke about off air previous podcast guests which i think might have been like 78 you can go back and have a listen to the episode with logan cole and you Mm. guys worked together at the time yeah logan recalls the story of you starting the podcast i think you said you were on a work trip you had you had a hotel room you were bunking by yourself because you were shooting podcasts in there at the time Mm. or something along those lines or you were hustling to make that happen and he said i remember one day we used to talk all the time about Mm. You know, there's more to life than this. Like, there's more to life than just struggling away and not being able to do what you love. And and that's not to say that there's no, like, honour in fucking working your ass off either. Like, yeah. that's a big thing. That's hard. I couldn't do it. Mm. You know, I couldn't put in the labour time. I'm, I'm a real creative brain, so it would be hard for me to be in that spot. But he recalls you walking in one day and saying, hey, this is it. Like, I'm going to chase the podcast. Yeah. What was the moment? Um, I don't know what the moment was. I mean, I, I remember the moment when I it became possible. I was in Sydney. I had a, me- uh, I had a meeting with a sponsor called Moneyball at the time. Yeah. And they'd agreed to pay me enough to do it full time. Um, so I remember that moment and realising like, wow, I, I actually, like it was, it was bugger all money. So it wasn't like it was a lot of money at all. Um, but I just remember that being the moment like, wow, I can really just do this for full time. Um, and yeah, I, I remember basically telling everyone I knew, like I'm going to quit my electrical apprenticeship and pursue this and everyone was like mate you're crazy and just it doesn't come from a negative place it's a smart thing because most people aren't going to make it you know most people that you know quit to pursue a dream they don't make it and they end up coming back so it's it's always you know I I think a lot of people conflate people's genuine uh, reasonable concern with like oh they were being a hater which is just not true like I don't I'm sure there were there were definitely haters um in my yeah. life at the start like obviously n- but not to the point where it would affect me like when you really think about it do you really have that many haters like not really yeah. um and so yeah like I, I understood it was a reasonable concern from then if you if you were to, a betting person you wouldn't bet on it, it succeeding because it's never been done before especially in rugby league um but i just i just knew that 
regardless of whether it exploded or just you know did solid numbers it was going to be a benefit for me in my life i could always come back to be electrician even though i didn't enjoy it and didn't like it at all but i could always come back to do that whereas this i you know there's there's um a value in being a first mover and i happen to be the first mover in the in this space and yeah just said stuff it walked in quit my job they were okay with it they were totally fine yeah um and yeah what's funny is that the ceo of the company years later came down with all his um workmates to my bar uh like this is like probably two years ago and he came into my bar and was like man i can't believe it it's so great it's like a big dog ceo ara electrical and all that they're worth a lot of money um and it was just a really cool full circle moment and really good from him you know like you know I'm, i was a young employee this guy's like 50 60 extremely yeah. successful to to be a humble bloke and like a lot of people in that position wouldn't i guess hu- not humble themselves but they wouldn't take the time to go visit an employee of theirs from yeah, years ago to shake their hand and say well done um and he did he, he did he shook my hand he said mate it's incredible what you did i remember when your employee all that kind of stuff and and to be to be fair ar electrical they stuck with me through a lot of personal stuff that they absolutely didn't need to especially when i first started being an employee with them they were very loyal to me that I mean, a lot of other people, they would have just, they had every right to get rid of me at the start and they didn't. So I'll always be appreciative to um, ARA Electrical that used to be known as Bass Electrical. At the time, how old were you? I think I was about 28 or 9 or something like that. And, you know, that's what a lot of this podcast is about now, right, is being in your 20s and society's handed you like this list of expectations. Like by 30, it's own a house, you know, have the partner that you're going to spend the rest of your life with have all these securities and these comforts and like be making the good money. You know, it's like you leave school, you study or you get into your trade and you start to form that life that society expects of everyone, right? Financial security. How hard is it at 28 to walk away from all of that and chase a dream? Like what are the challenges that come with that? Well, it's it's an interesting concept. You know, I think there's this kind of meme of our oh, society's, you know, normality is a bad thing and you know we're trapped and all this kind of stuff but it's actually it stems from traditions and Mm. you know the the the, of having a family you know having a house having a secure job that stems from tradition you know having a family and a wife you're more likely to be a better worker Um, if you have children they're more likely to have a successful upbringing so i think you have to understand that like conflating that with a negative thing is is not it's just not true like society has these norms to help us and tradition, in, not in all cases, but in some cases, um, in a lot of cases, sorry, is, is a good thing. Um, but if you can understand that and understand that if you, if you can look at it properly instead of what... Because like every, everyone kind of think, oh, I'm so woke because like, oh, I'm, I, I recognise that like that's the societal norm or whatever. But in reality, um, if you're not, in, if you're not uh, intuitive enough to understand that the tradition and societal norms are there to help us... Yeah. Um, then you're actually not making the decision correctly. Whereas I was aware that those things yeah. were there to help me, but I also knew that that's not what I wanted. Yeah. Um, and so when you, when you make that decision with that information, I knew that if I went and stuffed up, it would be my fault, you know, mm. it, because I'd be like, I had the societal norms, all I was trying to work towards it, I didn't have it yet. Um, and that was safe. And that is something where like, I could have gone off and failed. And the guy that just kept at his job, you know, nine to five, bought a house, had a relationship, he'd be in a much stronger position than I'd be, I'd be down the bottom and he'd be slowly progressing up. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's the risk you take. And I think some people don't really understand that. They just think, oh, everyone's doing it, therefore I've got to go a different direction, but they're not actually thinking about it properly. So it wasn't, it wasn't that hard at all. <coughs> um, it was more just, I'm, I'm, I was aware of it. I was aware of the risk that was um, associated with it. And I was, I was willing to pay the price of failure. And a lot of people aren't willing to pay the price of failure. What would you say it takes to be willing, right? Because for me, I'm, I'm in a position where we sort of spoke before, I'm nowhere near where I want to be with this. Mm. And in fact, you know, I'm, I'm far behind the likes of yourself who's got the securities and the systems in place. And, and that's just years of working your trade, But you right? think that, but you, but you wouldn't, it's, it's just not true. Like you, if you're starting a, a company and you're in your first few years, there's, there's really not much security whatsoever. Like we, we are just as much at risk as a bloke if anything, I'm more at risk than you because if, if this goes, yeah. I've got more debt, like, even though we don't have yeah. debt now. But if this all goes, yeah. more things fail. You know, the, my employees lose their jobs. Yeah. Um, the brand goes to shit. The value of the brand that was great goes down the bottom. You know what I mean? You're yeah. actually in a very freeing space right now. 
Yeah. And it's just about understanding that you, yeah, it, it feels like you're risking a lot, but when you think about it, like, what are you really risking? Like, what are you really risking? Well, well that's it. And when you love what you do, and that's one thing that a lot but of But even like this, like, what's your job? I get to talk to people. No, no, no. What, what was your job before this? Real estate agent. Real estate agent. You could literally go back to that, like that correct? Oh, 100%. Yeah. yeah 100%. So what are you risking? Well, that's it. Yeah. That's it. And for me, like, that's why selling the house and, and making those moves that yep. I guess everyone was like, oh, be careful of that. Don't do that. I know why I'm doing this mm. and I love this. And mm. my life perspective is, is a little different. Yeah. Like, I've got some health issues and stuff that have been... I guess more front of mind and I'm really well, I'm mm. really healthy, yep. but it makes you think, di think differently about your relationship with time yeah. and what really matters for you. Mm. A message I get a lot is a lot of guys who see this and I'm pretty honest, like I try to be really honest about the fact that I think some people, there's this misconception that because you make content, you make money. Mm. It's definitely not the case yeah. all the time. Sometimes it is and which is amazing um, and money's not my focus, but it helps and it's mm. a part of business, right? But I get a message nearly every week. Mm. I want to quit my job and make content. And I'm like, for those people, I'm always like, I stress the fact that like, you got to make sure you really love this, that it's the right decision. And if it is, like the people around you will support you and make the right lifestyle decisions. But what would you say to those people to ensure that they are making the right decision? Are there things that you knew? Like what made you think this is 100% the time and the thing to risk it for? Well, I mean, the, I was working while I was doing it. Like, if, you, yeah. if you're saying you want to quit, quit your job and make content, you're yeah. already lost. Because yeah. why can't you work and make content? Yeah. Um, so, if, if someone ever said, oh, if someone said, ever said that to me, I'd be like, bro, you've already, you're already probably not going to do well. Because like, if you aren't willing to work and then do this on the side... Yeah. Um, you don't love it enough. Then, yeah, you don't love it enough. Yeah. And whereas I, I was working 60 hours a week and doing the locker room on yeah. the side for free and editing all weekend because... Like, yeah, that that's just, um, you know, obviously everyone's circumstances are different and, I'm, you know, maybe someone would go out and um, and do that. Maybe when you're 18 you can do that and when yeah. you're, you know, a bit younger. But, you know, I just, if if you truly love it, you should have already started whilst you're working. There is yeah. plenty, no, like if, if you're not a professional that's working 60, 70 hours a week and you've got a normal job, you should be able to um, do both. And anyone that isn't able to do both and they're just lazy, then they're probably going to be lazy in content creation as well. Um, and I think also a lot of people don't understand that a lot of this like content and entrepreneurship and all that carry on, it's a, it's a form of escapism. It's actually, you know, it's like watching a movie to them. They, mm. they, actually, they, don't, they don't actually understand that um, in their own mind that they're viewing this content for escapism. They're viewing it for like a what if and uh, projecting onto like this crazy life that exists that really, you know, it doesn't exist. So um, it is, it's, it's very bizarre, this, this like this culture that has, you know, been propped up about like entrepreneurship mm -hmm. and like all these positive memes and all that kind of stuff because most people that consume it are never going to do it. Yeah. So it's like a movie. You watch a movie, mm -hmm. but you're never going to go out and live that life, are you? And so it's like a, yeah, it's um, it's just we're in this weird space where we're at the start of it. It's just started. It's so fresh. I think that's the thing. It's so fresh that mm. it's there's very few people who have walked the path that you can see the evolution of it, like how they grow. Like most people are still in that growth phase. Mm. You even look at a guy like Rogan who's been doing it for eleven years, and it's still growing. Mm. Like he hasn't really hit that point yet. Well, he was already super famous. He was at yeah. Fear Factor. He was a host well, of Fear, Fear Factor. Factor. He, he was like world of, famous. Have you seen his early day UFC yeah. things yeah. backstage? Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. and, and that's another thing. Like Rogan was commentating the UFC free for the first year, mm. like that's, and he was already the host of Fear Factor. Yeah, um, and that's how he like got the gig because Dana White knew that. So like again, if he's willing to do it for free, and you want to quit when you, you know, it's just it's a it's a bit crazy. Um, and also like you you got to look at the numbers too. Like let's say we look at this because like that's what you know the content creation space or whatever. When you in reality worldwide, you know we've got like Gary Vee, and I'm sure there's like you know, what, five, six other mainstream people? Yeah. Out of, what, seven billion people, yeah. there's seven people. Think about the numbers yeah. there. Um, and people think that, oh, there's all these, you know, avenues to get to where Gary V is or whatever. But in reality, that's, you've got, you know, you've got more chance of playing the NRL. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because there's seven of them the in seven billion are, people. The stats are tough. Yeah, so you've just got to be aware that, like, like if there's seven big, big, you know, guys that make money of creating content, 
and there's like let's just say 100 million competing for it you've literally got more chance of going and playing in a rel because there's what 400 people in a squad and yeah. there's only you know let's say 5 million people play it it's yeah. less than that but you know so yeah it's just about like looking at it in reality and taking away the i guess the the um the illusions lights. and the shine and that yeah for sure so if you are if you are willing to get into content if you're doing it on top of your hustle or you know on top of your normal job i shouldn't say hustle it's literally a normal job then 100 percent keep going like that's mad that means that you're keen that means that you're willing to sacrifice whereas if you genuinely don't make content and you're going to quit your job to make content it's like oh, in my opinion i'm like bro like you're just not it's just not yeah. the right mindset to have you gotta love it eh? Yeah, love. well, it, but it's like it's the willingness to make the sacrifice. You know, yeah. are you willing to sacrifice your free time for your dream? If yeah. you aren't, then is it your dream? No, it's just something that you wish you could do, but you're not willing to sacrifice for it. Yeah, I agree. I love it. Mm. I love it. Let's talk about the evolution of your personality in this space because from the outside looking in, if we look at the Australian market mm. and rugby league in particular, there are obviously your big dogs, the networks, you know, Channel 9, your Fox Sports. Outside of that, when you look at the, the independent, I guess you'd call it the independent market, you're the guy. <laughs> and there's, I think there's, plenty great, you know, there's plenty of great guys around you. Mm. Like we're just talk, talking about the boys from YKTR Sports and mm. there's plenty of great guys. You've got the Hello Sports boys in here now. Um, you know, if you look outside of the sport, Dill, Dylan friends, like there's so many great people doing this stuff, but... You've created almost this cult figure that the rugby league followers and fans fucking love, man. I like hope so. I think, I don't know, it feels like, weird, maybe, I guess so. <laughs> like where does it all come from? Is this just you being, like you said before, the ability to express your personality, to be who you are, but you're doing it behind a lens, like the beak, you know, the goosey, <laughs> like all of this yeah. stuff. Yeah. There's dudes saying it in the street, man. Like, It's just, yeah, I think if you're trying to like put, you know, sayings or ideas out there if you're trying to do it i think people can sense that yeah but like the goosey and the aroused and the fresh and the you know the beak um like in magulius like that came that wasn't that was just me like yeah. that was just me being like one of your mates are when you've got no cameras around like i'm yeah. sure you've got a mate i'm sure you've got a mate that you've watched footy and he said something so fucking stupid but so funny yeah but a lot of people, and, and me included, for the first few years, I was too scared to put myself out there because it is a very scary thing to like... Comedy is such a scary thing because it's like so personal. Mm. And you're like, you're putting yourself in front of hundreds of thousands of people to ridicule you. If you comedy is so... The line is so thin. Yeah. It's, it's either fucking cringe and it's like, look at this absolute Derek. Or it's like, wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, so for many years, it took me quite a, a long time basically my initial my initial mindset was it's not about me it's about the players and i did that for years where i did you, i was almost like a blank canvas where you didn't even really notice me well, that's why i was the way i felt obviously people felt differently but i felt like look i don't even want to be noticed i just want you to yeah. experience exact the best way you can experience these players and then it took like um you know me just wanting to create content and like you know seeing people oh shit people are like reacting to me saying stuff um, and then I was like, fuck, maybe I should like just be myself and see. And it just kind of grew more and more of like, oh, okay, like they're enjoying it. I guess I'll keep going. Like I don't, I don't ever want to feel like, if I ever felt like people were like, oh, brah, that's, that's shit. Like, what are you doing? Then I would stop. I'd be like, oh, okay, I'll stop because I don't want you guys to not enjoy the content. It's all, I think a lot of people in this, you know, not a lot of people, but some people, they, it's very me, 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 but you've got to always think it's actually not about you. It's about the people consuming your content. Like it's about... What is the core of what you're doing? The core is, is however you can do it, bring happiness into their life. And if that means me being at the forefront, great. If not, I'm happy to step back and give yeah. up with other people opportunities to bring happiness and positivity into the rugby league, league community. So that's kind of how it's slowly progressed. And, and again, even when you say, oh, I'm, I'm the guy or whatever, it doesn't really feel like that. I just feel like I'm, I maybe I represent maybe what the people want, maybe, or what they like, but... If there's ever a time where they stop enjoying that, I'll just I'll just switch to like taking a backward step and putting forward who, whatever it is that they do want kind of thing. Yeah, I think that's a massive point. We actually spoke about that on the way up. Liam and I, like, the rebrand of this was about, you know, I can fucking love it as much as I love it, but mm. if the people don't love it, well, then it's, it's just not a thing. It just doesn't exist. Right? Yeah, a brand only exists. A company, a brand, any idea that exists in the masses is only as good as the masses you know yeah. there's plenty of companies that exist no one knows about it's kind of like if a tree falls in the woods and no one's there to hear or see it did it happen 
Yeah. Um, it's the same with businesses. It's the same with you know content. Um, you've got to make sure that at the forefront of your mind, it's the people consuming the content. It's not you being like, oh, I'm so fucking great and look how good I am. Mean. It's like, how am I making that person happy? Um, you know, so, like a lot of uh, like, you know, and we're all guilty of it. Like some pitfalls that some content creators fall in sometimes is they, for example, they'll start voicing their com- their concerns or like, you know, so, you know, this comment was negative about me. This comment was negative about me. But like no one wants to hear about your shit. Yeah. They just want to be happy. So just you can keep your personal shit like that. Again, does, you can still obviously express how you feel, yeah. but sometimes people get like a bit negative and they'll be like talking about this bad thing, this bad thing happened to them. And it's like, we've always got to remember like at the end of the day, whoever is viewing it on their phone, you're trying to make them smile and make them happy. And is that going to make them happy? Probably not. So um, I just always remember that. Like I always remember that as long as these people continue to be happy, they'll pay the brand back by supporting us. 100%. I reckon that's great. And you've built that culture. So... I mean, credit to you. Thank you. It, it takes Appreciate a lot it. and it's exciting to see. And I love seeing people find their passions pursued and that's what a big part of this is about. It's a big goal for me is like the, the realisation. There's a quote that I love from a book. I talk about it all the time, The Alchemist. Now I'm no reader. Mm. I've read about three books mm. um, and I'll quote the fuck out of the three <laughs> that I've read. Um, and it's just like the, the person's only real obligation in life is to find their purpose and pursue it. Mm. And, and I love that, man. I think that's cool to see you doing that and realising those dreams here in the studio. And, you know, we're looking around here now. There's a few different settings within here. Yep. We're sitting right here in front of this neon sign, which is, I guess, the thing that most people would maybe recognise the most. Mm. It's definitely for me. Like, I watch a lot of content where you're sat in front of here. I've watched the, um, the Bloat FC reveal, yep. um, which I'm pretty sure was right here in these seats with Scope. Yeah, so we, that's, that's the only thing we've shot here is the Bloat FC. Um, we have like multiple sets. Like that's where we, I interview players, like very like more serious yep. stuff. And that's where we do a lot of the preview and reviews over there in the yep. Bloke Studios. Um, yeah, when I was designing it, I wanted to make sure we had multiple sets to keep things fresh in people's minds and yep. also to like offer or um, create a different feel for the viewer you know this is a bit yeah. more casual a bit more cruisy we're sitting whereas that's like very rogan-esque obviously we use long form interviews yep. and that's like a mixture between um you know new media but also it's got the old school you know sitting at a bench talking all things footy yeah. so yeah it was cool to design it that's for sure what was the inspiration to get guys like the hello sport boys dylan buckley like? um talent they're just good at what they do yeah. they're really fucking good at what they're doing they're good blokes that's obviously a step out of the rugby league space to a degree as well though yeah. so is it making this more so now that media company that speaks to the audience that you've built who may love many sports um well it's kind of like you know as a company you need growth and you need yeah. to um and so dylan does something very similar to me and he's in afl but i would never want to disrespect the nrl fans and the afl fans of me trying to get into afl because yeah. i don't watch it and I don't, I don't really care about it like yeah. um you know I, I don't get me wrong i care about it as a sport like i think it's fucking incredible what they do yeah. um you know i think it's uh, like as athletes they're incredible and i love the the spectacle of it all i love that they get heaps of fans out so i i, I respect all of that but if i was going to pretend that like i watch afl each week it's just not true i watch i watch footy and so dylan was doing something similar to me similar to me and i was like well if I can support him yeah. and show like, like if I'm supporting grassroots, which is supporting him and then he is genuine AFL, then I'm doing the right thing by the AFL community is by supporting one of their own that does good quality, positive content. And that's how I can show my respect to that community without yeah. taking the piss of like, I oh, actually, and the footy community, I do the footy because I fucking care about footy. This is number one for me. I, you know, that's all I'm focused on. So that's, that's why we went the Dylan Buckley route. Hello Sport, um, they're pretty much in rugby league, but they're just super talented and i just wanted to um they're not like a fish like we sponsor them but they're not like officially um like hired by me or anything like that yeah um they're, they're their own you know bosses and their own ship um you know but i just wanted to give them an opportunity i just wanted to give them opportunity in this space because i believe that they're talented enough and they deserve to be recognized in the rugby league community i think that they are going to be the hamish and andy of rugby league absolutely no doubt in my mind that in five to ten years they'll be two of the biggest personalities in rugby league absolutely no doubt in my mind that's really cool to hear hey i love that <laughs> i love seeing that obviously a big part of the brand is the beer mm. and the bar and like me personally i've got liver disease so i can't drink yeah, yeah. so i'd love to give you a raving review but I've never been <laughs> that's all good. um but i love hearing and seeing the evolution of that and obviously from what i could imagine and and you may speak differently about this here the the analytics and the numbers of that company would very much match the audience and the demographic of your pod and your content. 
Mm. Well, know. yeah, so what basically the plan from the get-go was to build a platform and then launch businesses off the platform. Okay. And so basically, you know, the business model is if we can make our marketing zero dollars, we are unbeatable. We cannot be beaten okay. long term. Next 20 years, if we're paying zero dollars to advertise our products, we cannot be beaten. But also, if we can show that like we create a product that you don't necessarily see as a product, but you see as high, high value. So like my listeners, if you go and buy a beer, you, you don't just get a good quality beer, you get free sports network. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's a great value exchange for someone. So f- like from a purely business perspective, I want to create so much value. And a lot of people talk about value, this, that, and the next thing, but they don't actually live it. It's just a fucking word that they throw out to sound like they're... They sound good. Yeah, they sound. But if I can go, you know, let's say it's 50, 60 bucks for a case, 59.95. You know, if you can pay 59.95 for a bloke, a case of bloke in a bar, plus get, you know, six hours of content a week, maybe even more, or you can pay 50 whatever bucks for another beer but you just get the beer you know yeah. what's what's the better exchange yeah um and so that's that's the business kind of model that i wanted and then obviously the side of it with the free marketing like if i'm reaching a million people a week or whatever and beer is on it most m- most companies even if they threw a hundred million dollars to try to make that happen there would be no authenticity yeah. and that's why i wanted to build the audience first because they can see i'm in it like i went years without selling any you know any of my products or anything like that so they can see, like, I genuinely love footy. Yeah. I, think I would be doing this whether, you know, there was a dollar, a million dollars, a billion dollars. Like, I genuinely care about footy. You build it's, that trust, right? built that trust. And so they could see for years, like, wow, like, years, he is genuinely cares about footy. So um, that was always the plan from the start because, you know, I just think that, yeah, yeah, as a business, if you don't have to pay anything for, obviously, we will have to pay some for, for marketing, but eventually we can get to a point where, we've got a whole online sports network and it's just all brought to you by Bloke and a Bar Beer yeah. and Bloke and a Bar Merch. And people are lo- lo- laughing. They get this sick free network, beer they enjoy and cool merch. Like it's yeah. it's a great value exchange. And then I, and obviously I get to continue to impact rugby league in a positive way. What comes first, the beer then the bar? Or the bar then? The beer then the bar. But So the beer we launched and then we had the opportunity to take over the bar. So we just sold out of it in like the first two months and then and then we just made it exclusive at the bar. So like it had a little launch, but no, it wasn't it wasn't really a launch. It was more like a, a beta. It was like a pre-launch. Yeah. Then we did the bar and we had it on tap there and then obviously just, just over probably like 12 months and about four weeks ago uh, or about six weeks ago, sorry. Um, yeah, we launched the beer properly. Yeah. So have you studied any business or is the business acumen just off the back of just the work and the hustle and the like that YouTube education? Um, no, it's it's hard. Like, I'm a, maybe I'm wrong. I, I don't know what the right answer is to this, but I, I, I always feel that like if you if you want to, I guess, um, what's the word? If you want to disrupt a, a business or if you want to disrupt an industry, you can't really do what's been done before. So if yeah. you've got ideas that you think are revolu- you know, can revolutionise the industry, for example, creating a sports network with you know, your own beer and that on it, um, you're not going to learn something that's... If you learn something from another business, it's already been done. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like the, the businessy side of things, um, I think the broader strokes, it's good to read you know, about Steve. I just put it this way. Whenever someone says, go read these 100 books, I'm always like, Did, I don't know, did Steve Jobs read 100 books before he created Apple? Yeah. You know? Maybe he read books about, you know, uh, it was like Japanese calligraphy or whatever it's called. Yeah. And But was he reading books about business? I don't think so. I thought he, his ideas revolutionized the world. Same with like Bill Gates. Did he read business books before he changed the world? Yeah. Um, again, so I don't know what the right answer is there. You know, I, I just, any visionary, were they, were they, you know, cooped up for years reading books or did they just go out and do it? Yeah. I don't know, maybe. I could, again, I don't know what the, the the reality is, but like Elon Musk, he just went out and did it. He did PayPal and then yeah. he went into all these other different businesses. So I, I'm not sure what their own answer is. All I know is for me, I like to try to keep my mind as clean as possible. Um, and don't get me wrong, you, you've got to learn from lessons before you, like wisdom and tradition yep. and, and stuff like that. But sometimes common sense is for common outcomes, you know? Yeah. Um, I yep. like that. That's fuck. That's words of wisdom. Well, I'd Wait, hey, I've got a young fella, right? <laughs> so there's a little backstory for you. There's a young fella that works at the cafe, Jonah. Mm. Shout out to Jonah Sullivan. I always give Jonah a shout out. He's a fucking legs. <laughs> so the studio that I work out of is above a cafe mm. in town, Liam yep. E. And above Liam E in Crown Street there, 
um, is where we are. So every morning I go down and I ask Jonah for words of wisdom while he makes my coffee. Yeah. I put him on the spot. Yeah. And so every time someone <laughs> rocks some really good words of wisdom on here, yeah. I give Jonah a bit of a grilling to, <laughs> to make sure he's studying. <laughs> he's studying. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. It just seems it seems pretty obvious. Like if you're getting common advice, that's for most people. Yeah. Whereas most things that have been revolutionary, they're not common. They're uncommon. And yeah. also it's it, another thing as well is like, you know, if you want to live an uncommon life, you've got to be willing to do what common people won't do. Yeah. So whenever things get hard, you've got to say, this is the part where most people won't do it. I've got to do it. And you can lean into it. Um, and again, it's, there's nothing, uh, the, the, the common people or in, or whatever, there's a lot of safety in there. And there's also, there's a, there's a lot of success in there. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of, again, again, you find a lot of the, the Elon Musk's and Steve Jobs, again, please, I'm not, compare myself to them to at all i'm just saying they they revolutionize the world so yeah. they're the pinnacle of it they're the pinnacle of it but these guys aren't just like safe you know everything's cozy happy you know relatively mellow all the time these guys are fucking like this yeah and so um it's just if you're looking to have a, a good solid life that's great and you'll have a good solid life you won't have the pitfalls that they had you won't be elon musk sitting at a bar with his whole company going bust after he'd used all his PayPal money. You won't be that. Like, you don't... So if you... Like, there's probably a five, six other Elon Musks that didn't get the phone call 24 hours and their whole company got shut down. You know yeah. what I mean? So, um, yeah, I just think that y you see all the highs from the, the great the great men, but you don't see all the lows. And so... Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's... it's um, if you want to do something revolutionary, I guess you've got to be willing to fully just like it the, the idea might seem insane like for example when i said i wanted to be a com competitor to fox sports on like i wanted to be an online fox sports that's what i said to these guys like three years ago i was at a table one was like a, a journal that had been in the industry for ages another guy had been in the like you know the media industry for ages and they literally like they laughed in my face and and that's that was their mindset you know like it, i don't i don't you know obviously it lit, it lit a fire I, I mean i already had the fire and obviously i was like all right well we'll see um but that's a common mindset, you know what I mean? That's a yeah. mindset of like, oh, that's just impossible. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. No, good on you, man. Good on you. Talk to me about Den and Kemp outside of all of the content, the business. Like when you're not in the office, the thing that I find is when you look at people, you know, you speak about those three characters in particular who have revolutionised the world and business. Mm. More specifically, they have certain anchors in their life, certain anchors in their day that, allow them to be the high performers or the high energy entertainers that they are like mm. someone like yourself what does that look like outside of all of here um I, I, that's the thing like i don't i mean you, you could say my i guess continued work process is you know working all the time that that may yeah. be an anchor but i'm not really one of like discipline helps a bit but discipline can also you know hurt creative freedom like some of the most creative people in the world are, are very um are very erratic yeah. you know the greatest art artist in that you know van gogh cut his fucking ear off mailed it to someone yeah um you know so it's i think everyone is different you know everyone gets the best out of themselves differently um some people can really have an anchor of discipline in their life where they wake up at six o'clock or they wake up at eight thirty and they go to bed at 10 o'clock or whatever it is and then some people are, are a bit more wild and erratic and that's how their creativity comes out and, yeah and you know they always say for example when a, a superstar is about to drop an album it if the superstar has had a relatively easy last few years the album's not as good when a superstar has been yeah. struggling and he's had been through heartbreak the album's yeah. better because pain is usually where good creativity comes from and a lot of people don't realize that they just they just want the good they don't they don't understand that the bad can create beauty and so uh, yeah, for me, I don't really have an anchor. I, I guess you could say I exercise every day, but there's not really other what than that. What do you that. do these days? How does the body feel? Um, yeah, body? pretty good, pretty good. I, I basically just do boxing and um, a bit of weights. That's that's really. Yeah, oh, I go for go for runs now every now and then. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's just other than that. Not not. It's really just work, man. Honestly, just work. Yeah, nice. Well, obviously, you're doing what you love, so it makes yeah. makes a huge difference. Absolutely, right? absolutely, and and because I own it, you know, like it's. Um, when you're working for someone, you're not you're getting your wage. Whereas, like when you own it, every progression that you make, you get the rewards for it. So it's it's worth those extra hours. It's worth, you know, 
mesh you get into your entire life that you could you, you're never going to have a day off you're never going to not think about it but again that's when we come back to the you've got to be willing to do what most people won't do most people want to have switch off they want to just go home and not think about it again which is yeah. good man it's good for your mental health you can just switch off um but i think the rewards are worth it uh long term amazing hey this sort of rings in now the the consistent part of the podcast the one consistent part the q a questions from me five they're consistent every pod i think i'm going to throw a bonus one in today six question answers from today my man over there in that chair and these questions are some fun some thoughtful some thought provoking and i don't know maybe they'll be a hit maybe they won't be it's too early <laughs> to know but we'll see so we're going to run through them so this is the part where you won't hear me for about a couple seconds and lob city productions will roll that cheeky little intro song with me going to get into that Q&A so five questions the first question being what's something that you love about yourself about myself yeah um because you know like at the moment in this space a lot of boys talk about the gratefuls which I love mm. talk about counting like I talk about counting my blessings all the time for the things that I'm very appreciative of in my life and a mate said to me once sometimes it's nice to like do a bit of internal reflection and say what's some, one thing I'm almost you know it's easy way to say is one thing I love but what's something I'm really proud of myself for mm. um I guess my ability to, to keep turning up. Pretty, it's pretty I like much it. it. Yeah, Simple just, but effective. Yeah, just keep hanging in there, really. Nice. Mm. One great lesson that life's taught you. Um, no one gives a fuck about you. And you have done nothing, honestly. Like, obviously your family do and your partner does. But at the end of the day, this could all go tomorrow. And people forget, they'll move on. So you've always got to keep delivering. You know, you've, you've, you've really, what have you achieved? Like, people that get caught up in their own, oh, fuck, I've done this and that. It's like... You know, you really haven't done that much. Um, and I think life has taught me that you've always got to be humble to the fact that life will humble you. Absolutely, life will humble you. And any time that you get a bit ahead of yourself, it'll fucking humble you. So just staying um, respectful to life's power. Yeah. Do you think that also leans into, like you said before, like the confidence just to be who you are? Like really someone might judge you for five seconds or five minutes but fuck they'll forget about you tomorrow mm. oh yeah like that's that's a huge you know, a lot of people that think that oh someone's gonna sit there and say this about me or say that about me like, unless you're being a complete 90 and you just you know keep doing it yeah. um most people they'll they'll think they'll just they'll think negatively about you and then they'll just forget about it you know and then and then they'll see another video of you and if you're not if they like that they'll probably like it so you know, things aren't as big a deal as, you know, the fear is often greater than the reality. Yeah. Next question. This is the, the one where it sometimes gets a little bit deep on the show. Mm. Have you ever had your heart broken? Yeah, absolutely. Um, my career, um, yeah, mates, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, and how do you, how do you feel like you heal from that? Because that's like something in your 20s that's really, like, relevant, right? Yeah, whether that be relationships, whether that be... You know, we're not trying to be therapists here. That's the last thing we're doing on this show. But, you know, whether that be, like, relationships, work, life, is there something that you do when you have those little those little moments? You know, we call them, some call them failures. You could call them learnings or those heartbreaks where it just brings yourself back to being grateful and being appreciative of where you're at. Yeah, I mean, look, I think if something bad happens to you, it's okay to be down. It's okay to be upset. It's okay to go through a period of time where you're not as productive and you're hurting. Like, I think a lot of people, they, they expect like, oh, all right, I had my heart broken immediately. Look at the positives in life and oh, life's so great. But that's just fucking not true. We're human beings. We have emotions. We have feelings. It's okay to be down for a week or two. It's okay to slowly take time to get back to who you are. Don't think that you've got to listen to this fucking online nonsense of like, you're never supposed to feel pain. Sometimes pain is good. Mm. Um, as I said, the best create a lot of the best creativity comes from pain. Some of the the works of art that have lasted f hundreds of years came from pain. So I just think that just it's it's going to happen. Your time will heal it. Your time eventually you'll get past it. So 
don't think that because what will happen what happens with a lot of people these days something bad happens in their life then they go online and they read all these fucking nonsense memes about you know appreciate this and you're living and you're breathing and then they start feeling bad about themselves because they can't feel good yeah you know what i mean like oh well i should appreciate it. and i saw this person on instagram saying loving life even though this happened and you see all these like snapshots of people's lives it's like no you're hurting it's okay you'll get through it but you don't have to be happy you don't have to appreciate everything you can fucking be angry at everything eventually it'll come around eventually you'll be okay again um, don't feel like you've a rush to be Mr. Fucking I appreciate everything and life's good and I've ne- there's no bad things in my life and I never get angry and I've just got to be Mr. Zen all the time. It's like, bruh, like, you're like, for example, monks, they're Zen. That's great. What what are they achieving though? Yeah. You know what I mean? They're, yeah. They're just Zen, mad. But what have you achieved? Whereas like Steve Jobs, super, like crazy erratic guy, yeah. one of the hardest bosses you've ever met and look what he did with his life. So. Yeah. I just don't, I don't subscribe to the, we should never feel pain and all of these processes to feel this, like feel it, go through it and you'll always come out stronger and wiser and know what to do and what not to do next time. Beautiful words, man. Um, Question number four, what story will your future autobiography tell? Um, Hopefully one of greatness, hopefully. We'll see that. Will that be a story of greatness in the media space, in the business space? Is that too hard to figure out or map out just yet? Just in general, you know, I want to have a positive impact in the Australian sporting community. So if that means that, you know, by the end of my career, people, I just want a lot of people to say Denon did good things to this world. Like Denon brought more good than he did bad into this world. That's a win for me. The simplicity of that is nice. I like that. The last question. Who's someone who inspires you? My dad. I like that. Yeah, 100% my dad. No, no one else other than, than him. He's the he's the goat. Hardest working man I know. Doesn't complain. Um, just yeah, absolute legend. Absolute legend. Where did you grow up? Uh, Mudjabar, Gold Coast. Okay, and dad and fam are still up that way. Yep, yep. Still living on the Gold Coast, living at the family home. He just won an order of Australia for helping youth at risk. So he's a fucking mad oh, dog. What a legend. What legend. a legend. Legend of a bloke. I bet you they're proud watching this. Yeah, he loves it. He loves it. It's all, it's embarrassing though because he brought, like he fucking boasts about it all the time. I'm like, Dad, chill. But I get it. You know, I, I know if I had a son and he was doing okay, yeah. I would be very proud as well. And again, there's like there's nothing wrong with being proud about people you love. Like, yeah. if you're proud of your mates, fucking say it, man. Like, if there's tell yeah. your mates you're fucking proud. Like, let's say yeah. it's mad. Like, this whole idea of like oh fucking boasting about your mates. Like, fuck yeah, he's my mate. He's killing it. Like, yeah. that's mad. Like, what am I, the guy that's going to sit there and be like, oh, that was mad, but don't say anything. It's like, fuck, then you're a Derek. You're a hater. Like, be proud of the people you love. Absolutely. If you're not getting that too, I feel like you've got to look at your circle. Like, I feel so, so lucky that I've got the most amazing family, man. Like, my family is, my parents have been divorced for 13 years mm. and we still have Christmas at mum's house. That's and they've beautiful. both got partners. Like, mm, I've got a younger good. sister, her partner. He's a goat. Like, fucking love him to death. It's love like the best of, family. it's the best of a bad situation you know what I mean and you know what it is like for me so I've got cystic fibrosis right mm. so like perspective maybe like we've been lucky that our perspective is different like yep. life is not always guaranteed mm. it's not always doesn't always go to plan so maybe that's been a part of it but I look at them man and, and very similar to you the answer to that question for me is my family because fuck like the, the strength they would have had to have raised me the way they have, to have gone yep. through all the challenges. They done the hard work early. Mm. And no one else would ever me. do that for you. Yeah, you know right. I mean? No one else it. would ever They're do always that. Always there. Yep. And you know, you said before the way that sometimes it's like dad's pumping you up. Man, I've, I've literally heard my old man in a bar yeah. tell someone, ask them, oh, have you heard of Rogan? They're like, yeah, he goes, yeah, my son, I reckon he's better. <laughs> How and good. Like, That's mad. Like, That's what you want. I'm like, fuck, I love that. Yeah, man, fucking I love that. So Fucking oath. Fucking we're grateful. And it's, it's good to hear that. I love hearing that people have great connections with their family because I feel very grateful for mine. Yeah, and it, you know, it makes you realise like how how um, sad it is people that don't, you know, like it's a huge part of your life. If you don't have your family or your mother and father in your life, it's a, it's a ne- it will negatively impact you massively. So you, my heart always goes out to people that our parents have divorced or, you know, you know they don't see their family or whatever because yeah. that, at the end of the day outside of like your wife or your husband your family is really other other than some families that break up your family is really the only ones yeah. that no matter what they will open your door like whatever issue you have whatever you've done in your life they will love you the same usually and and to find unconditional love is very especially in today's 
kind of society where everyone, you know, it's, it's all about, you know, my standards and what I deserve and, you know, they don't meet this or whatever. And it's like, you know, you've got to think about what can you give another person? What can you give your other, you know, your partner? What can you give to them? What, what life can you provide them? And, and, and everyone's always so caught up in what they can get. Mm. Um, and you'll never, you'll never be unhappy by serving other people. You just won't because you've, you've always got that inner, um, I guess, peace that you've provided a positive impact to the world. I love it, man. So good to hear. This is kind of where we wrap it up. Awesome. A um, few things I want to say. I want to say to everyone listening or watching, hopefully watching, we're trying to pump that YouTube up. Yeah. Um, get across. There'll be all the links in today's show description to go follow Denon, bloke in a bar, like everything he's doing. I love your stuff. I love Thank your work. You. It is, like I said, you know, it's very nice for me and very motivating to walk into here and see what you're doing and see how well you've done. We yep. are in very different lanes, but I appreciate your work all the same. Um, very happy for you. Um, you should be very proud. Thanks, and I know you're, you're someone that doesn't glorify your work too much, like you said, but, um, you know, I'd like to give you a pat on the back because I think you deserve it. And I want to say thank you so much to each and every one of you that are listening and watching for tuning in and supporting the show. This means the absolute world to me. It's my dream to make this happen. I'm hustling, as you said before. This is what I love and I'm going to keep going. Well, if you ever think you're working too hard and life's hard, there's people in Africa that's literally working 88 hours a week getting nothing. Oh, Francis and Ngannou. You, exactly. You hear that story. That's but I mean, th- but not even Francis and Ngannou. There's people working 80 hours a week, yeah. getting paid nothing, living in poverty. You know, like like people that say, oh, like, oh, you know, I got here because of hard work. It's like, no, no, like there's people that work way harder than you do. Mm. So you can, you can always work harder. You can always work harder. And I, I think it's great that, you know, for the last whatever years you've been doing this. How many years have you been doing this now? This is about 18 months now. Yeah, so it's like awesome that, you know, you're taking the plunge now, but you've proven that you're willing to make the sacrifices and work hard because, like, it's it's a given. If you, you've got to, in my, in my opinion, you've got to put in your mind that you should never boast about working hard yeah. because it should just be a given. Like, yeah. like, oh, yeah, I work really hard. It's like, yeah, of course I work hard. If you put that in your mind, and you have put that in your mindset, um, then you're never going to have the argument with yourself of like, oh, maybe I need a little break or whatever. You just like you've you've put in your mind, yeah, of course I work hard. That's a given. It's now I need to go to that next level. Um, so I think it's awesome, bro. I, I, congratulations, you got this far. And some of the people you've had on, you had Scope on, you had yeah. Simi on, Tommy Waterhouse, Tom Waterhouse. Good that's bro. good, bro. That's hu- that's hustle, man. Like you know, it takes it's it's very hard to get a hold of some of these people. So it's 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 awesome, bro. So yeah, I've had to fucking pester you for a minute. No. Bro, I so. I only seen your your message well, what two weeks bro, ago. I, I know how like your messages would be fucked. <laughs> yeah, it's so it's that's crazy. the thing. Some people say, do you get discouraged? I'm like, not at all, because mm. sometimes, bro, like I don't even get many messages. But when like when you said when you're working hard and you got your head down, mm. sometimes I miss messages from my fucking best mates. I've just not seen them pop yeah. up. And also like even if. Like on one day I could be like, nah, I'm not interested. But a few weeks later I might be interested. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it I guess when you like if you're pestering every week, it's like, mate, having yeah, some chill. respect, chill out. Yeah. But uh, uh, you know, just a random message every few months, like most people like they get it. Like I get it, you know. It's it's um if you if you're polite and you just you know, if you're if you do exactly what you've done, you've been polite and, and you've got Tom Waterhouse, Simi, Scope, like I'm sure you get plenty more, so I think it's great, bro. I, I um I wish you the best of luck. Hope you kill it. Thank you so much. We're here in the flesh. Now we're out. Well.